everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye some 100% Peruvian Highland wool roving with some neon acid dyes to create a pastel rainbow. The dyes we have here are the remnants from making some 1% stock solutions of Dharma acid dyes in frozen, fluorescent fuchsia, purple pop, fluorescent lemon, radioactive, and fluorescent safety orange. And five of the six colors, basically everything but the frozen, is fluorescent, and well, the frozen is just a bright blue that I like to pair with the other colors. I have 100 grams of the wool of the Andes roving in this four inch deep catering steam pan. And I'm bringing in one liter of water that has two tablespoons of white vinegar in it, just to start. Uh, the roving is still dry, but I am gently attempting to submerge it in this liquid so that way it can be a little wet when we come and apply those dyes. The roving is really well spread out and these are colors that are known to spread so we should get good coverage but we may end up with some white pockets and that is okay with me. That is not something that I mind horribly. Um, and yeah, this is good. We've got enough liquid that we can start soaking this, but there's not so much liquid in here that when we add the other colors that could cause, I don't know, some issues. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna add some more. I'm gonna add another 500 milliliters of water just because I want to give a chance for this roving to soak up some of the water, even though yeah, I, I think that this will work well. Even though then we have more water, things will spread more. These colors are gonna spread a bit anyway because that's what they do. Uh, if you would like to learn more about the roving, I do have Nitpicks affiliate links down in the video description. And I will also have links to all of the other tools and equipment that I like to use in my videos. So I'll be back in 30 minutes or so and we'll start applying the dye while everything is still cold. We probably have some wet spots, but I'm not gonna worry about that. And let's start with our yellow because that color will probably disappear. <laughs> That's just what happens. That's just what happens with yellows. And then here is our radioactive. There is a little bit of white space on there. Again, I'm not worrying about it. The goal is it for like an easy breezy rainbow effect. If there's some white in there, that'll blend. It'll be fine. And then we've got our, I think this is our purple pop. At least I hope it's our purple pop <laughs> down at the end versus our fluorescent fuchsia. But you can see that the frozen uh, is not spreading as far as the other colors. Okay, yes, this is our fluorescent fuchsia, which I am just focusing down there, but you can see how it's going and it'll probably take over that yellow, as I said. And at this point, we've got enough liquid. I'm gonna turn on the heat, you know, and I'm pouring on our fluorescent safety orange a little bit slowly. And there we go, we've got a rainbow. It's gonna blend, things are gonna move. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, I have the heat on high for a moment, but as soon as I start seeing any steam, I'm going to reduce the heat to low. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm gonna cross my fingers. Uh, who knows how much white we'll have on the bottom. I am excited, but I would say of these, our pink is feeling the brightest to me, uh, for sure right now, but uh, the green always shifts a little bit once we get some heat and I'm hearing some movement but not seeing it so I'm going to reduce the heat to low and we'll come back in about 20 minutes. It has been 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't know and I'm checking. I would say we still have, yeah there's definitely some orange, absolutely still pink. Let's see on the purple, we still have some purple. Uh, probably a lot all over. Okay, we've got a lot of different colors still going on here. I am going to go ahead 
and add just some bits of vinegar just to help and maybe give a little pocket for some air to come out. Yeah, if I pour the vinegar directly onto the fiber, I can see that, uh, that it moves the color and so things have not struck yet. I now have the heat on the lowest setting and I'm gonna let this sit another 30 minutes. All right, it's been about 30 minutes and I am still seeing, well, the blue is gone, but I'm still seeing, ah, we're clearing a bit over there. We're clearing a bit over there. Oh, I'm gonna push this further down because maybe it's not very warm down here. My burners are here and here, and so I don't think it's necessarily that warm down at the pink end. I am turning on up the heat a bit and adding some more vinegar down there. But I'm also gonna add, yeah, a little bit of water down around the edges just to help things. Now, I have for a brief moment turned up the heat to be higher so that way we can get a little bit more warmth distribution around the fiber. But now I'm gonna reduce the heat to low. And I'm gonna get some tin foil to cover this. I probably should have done this earlier, but since we have non-super washable roving and fluorescent colors that take more heat and time, we should cover this. It's not gonna be covered completely, but this will trap some of the steam in the pan, uh, which will help trap some of that heat in there and help us get more heat coverage throughout the entire thing. And so I am gonna wait now another 20 minutes and then we'll chat. Okay, the timer just went off and I just wanted to show you all that it is nice and steamy under there. I'm not actually, okay. I thought I wasn't gonna check it, but I am gonna quickly check it. Uh, the heat is still on. I'm gonna turn off the heat shortly. Okay, I'm still seeing some pink, but it looks like some of the other colors have cleared. I am going to go ahead and leave the cover on and let this cool overnight. And we'll check once things are cool tomorrow morning uh, to see where we are with regards to those pinks. It's the next morning. The fiber looks beautiful. And we may be good, but let's add it to some cold water that has a tiny bit of soap in it. I just put like two drops of some clear dish soap into some cold water. Now I'm coming in with our roving. It's possible there is the tiniest, tiniest hint of pink in the pan, but I think most is in the fiber and it looks like with the exception, even the blue, we got really nice penetration. So I am going to let this soak here for a couple of minutes, but it, where you've got a very, very nice rainbow sherbet feeling here. And I'm really <laughs> excited. I think that sometimes with some, when you're dealing with non super wash wool, whether it's spun or not, if you're doing something immersion and it doesn't even have to be fluorescent colors, Sometimes you just need to let it sit and not move it for a long time to give those colors time to absorb. And I mean, I think we're good. I think we're real good. But anyway, I'm gonna let this soak for a few minutes and then we'll rinse it. It just really looks like that rainbow sherbet, which I don't think I've had rainbow sherbet in years. Isn't it like vanilla tasting, but multicolored? Uh, this is really fun. Have I ever? tried to use the neon colors on roving before? I don't know. I mean, the next thing is obviously to try to do it much more concentrated, right? Which is a little bit scary. <laughs> Just because these are known bleeding colors. 
but with no color coming out in the water right now, I am going to fill up the basin with water and yeah, just rinse out the soap which there wasn't very much soap, so I don't have to do a lot of rinsing. And now, I'm gonna go pop this in my spin dryer to remove the liquid and hang it up to dry. I'm trying to not make my floor too wet in the process. This worked so well. This worked so, so, so well. And I was worried about not having yellow. We have yellow. It's there, maybe not everywhere, but I think one thing that works in our favor for saving the yellow is that uh, the green is mostly yellow. You get a lot of yellow feel from the spread because ultimately our green is made out of a fluorescent yellow with a little bit of blue in it. And so I think that maybe we would have needed a tiny bit more blue and a tiny bit more green uh, to have those pop more and also Layering some more blue onto the purple wouldn't help. Pastel purple pop does feel extremely pink. But as far as the colors go, I see them all. I see them all. Now, neon wise, I would say some of that pink, orange, yellow feels a lot more neon. The blue and purple feel a bit less so. But I'm also struggling to show this well on camera without blowing the colors out too much because really they are pastel, but there is something feeling like highlighter coming from the pink, orange, and yellow. Which again, to be fair, these are the most fluorescent of all the colors. There is so little dye in this fiber. It is incredible. I mean, really, it's just remnants from rinsing for making stock solutions and measuring things out. There isn't a lot of color. And we got a beautiful pastel rainbow, a bright pastel rainbow dream. When you braid it up and squint a bit, the green and purple definitely have a little bit less presence here. Uh, even I bet if we flip it over, maybe I see a little bit more green, but overall you don't feel that as much. And funnily, in the past when I was doing pastels with these neons, for one of the years of Hanukkah, I think I kept finding I needed to like add a little bit more green to have that have that more of an impact versus feeling pretty yellow. And so that's just interesting. The last thing we gotta do is go into my closet and you can see there's a little bit of light leaking, but let's look at this under a black light and oh my God. This is amazing! <laughs> there is just so much glow! Oh my gosh! Okay, I reduced the exposure, and I think now you see a little bit closer what's to my eye. Uh, I definitely see pockets, and the green and the yellow give us the biggest pop of color. The orange and pink a bit less, but oh, this is so fun! I know not enough people have black lights or use them often enough that maybe that's a fun perk of these fluorescent dyes, but as someone who cared a lot for a lot of their academic career about things that were fluorescent and using those properties to learn things about the world, it's a lot of fun to have fluorescent dyes and to play with them and to see how they look under different types of light. So I hope that you really enjoyed the process as much as me and enjoyed enough to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I love all things rainbow, but neon rainbows absolutely have a special place in my heart. Now, am I a little terrified to try to dye a much more neon, neon roving where the colors are brighter? Yeah, I'm terrified. I'm terrified because the colors spread a lot and then they also bleed a lot and need a lot of washing. And so having less of it means that you need less washing and I don't like doing a lot of washing on roving. But let me know in the comments if I need to try to do more neon, <laughs> pump up the neon, pump up the volume on a neon rainbow yarn in the future. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.